हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज डॉक्टर अशोक कुमार फ्रॉम गवर्नमेंट वुमेन इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज अजमेर एंड दिस इज लेक्चर सी ऑफ एंटीना पैरामीटर सीरीज एंड इन दिस लेक्चर सिक्स वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द मैक्सिमम इफेक्टिव अपर्चर एरिया एंड रिलेशन बिटवीन द इफेक्टिव अपर्चर मैक्सिमम इफेक्टिव अपर्चर एरिया एंड द डायरेक्टिविटी एंड ऑल्सो डिस्कस अबाउट द वैक्टर इफेक्टिव लेंथ ऑफ द एंटीना एंड दिज लेक्चर इज इम्पोर्टेंट इन द एस्पेक्ट ऑफ इफेक्टिव अपर्चर एज वेल एज डायरेक्टिविटी एंड दैट रिलेशन वी आर यूजिंग फॉर वेरियस काइंड ऑफ एंटीना दैट वी नीड टू कैलकुलेट सम इम्पोर्टेंट पैरामीटर्स लाइक गेन डायरेक्टिविटी एंड वेन द अपर्चर इज गिविन और वी कैन कैलकुलेट द अपर्चर वेन द डायरेक्टिविटी एफिशियंसी सम काइंड ऑफ पैरामीटर्स आर गिविन सो दिस इज एन इम्पोर्टेंट लेक्चर ऑफ दिस रीच and uh, the following contents will be addressed in which we are uh, going to discuss about uh, directivity effective aperture and relation between the maximum directivity and maximum effective aperture and also we uh, have calculated the relation between the gain and effective aperture and further we have uh, analyzed the vector effective length and some kind of problem based on the vector effective length and maximum aperture area the contents of this lecture is prepared with the help of the following reference book first we need to calculate the relation between the maximum directivity and maximum effective area and the effective area we have discussed in lecture 5 and uh, of this series and the directivity we have discussed in lecture 4 uh, of this series in that case we can get the relation between them so for calculating the relation between them then we have considered the two antenna systems in which uh, uh, we have considered a directional antenna here you can say this is the uh, horn antenna and they, these horn antenna we have considered as a reference antenna this horn antenna we have uh, referenced as one and this horn antenna when we are using as a receiving mode we have referenced as as two and the distance between uh, from the horn one to the horn two is r and uh, this is the direction of propagation from the transmitting to the receiving antenna in that case in the transmitting side we have consider the aperture at is the uh, aperture of the transmitting antenna and dt is the directivity similarly we have consider ar is the aperture of the receiving antenna and dr is the directivity of the receiving antenna and here a uh, m represent the maximum and that uh, we have discussed when we are considering the case of isotropic radiator then uh, as a antenna 1 and similarly we are calculating the rm arm when we are using antenna 2 as a reference antenna i, I mean isotropic radiator in both cases we have analyzed so uh, we need to first calculate the radiated power density at a distance r and uh, it is assumed that antenna work 1 is a this antenna 1 is a isotropic that we can calculate w not is equal to pt upon 4 pi r square where pt is the total radiated power because of the directive properties of the antenna the actual density wt is equal to so we have multiplied equation 67 by the direct total directivity of the transmitting antenna wt is equal to w not into dt and pt dt upon 4 pi r square so this is the actual density and uh, the power collected or radi radiated by the antenna and transferred to the load t of r suppose this is the received power we can say uh, which is equal to wt ar wt is the actual power density and ar is the effective area as we have discussed uh, assumed initially ar which is equal to pt dt ar upon 4 pi r square or we can also uh, rearrange these uh, uh, parameters in terms of dt into ar that we have initially assumed which is equal to pr upon pt 4 pi r square similarly in the case second antenna t used as a transmitter and one as a receiver in that case and uh, the intervening medium is linear passive and isotropic so we can calculate dr at is equal to pr upon pt 4 pi r square so this equation 69a and 
when we are equating then we can get the relation dt upon at is equal to dr upon ar so here you can see the important relation and when uh, increasing the directivity of an antenna increases effective area in the direct propulsion so we can say uh, this is uh, the maximum case and dot atm equal to dor upon arm where atm and arm and dot and dor is the maximum effective areas and uh, directivities of the antenna lambda is has 1 and 2 respectively if antenna is one is isotropic isotropic antenna it means the antenna radiated equally in all direction in that case the maximum directivity we have consider equal to 1 and uh, the maximum effective area can be calculated atm is equal to arm upon dor and from the equation 73 we can find out that the maximum effective area of isotropic source is equal to the ratio of the maximum effective area to the maximum directivity of any other source as you can see for example let uh, uh, the other antenna be a very short and less than less than lambda dipole whose effective area 0.119 lambda is square and a maximum directivity is equal to 1.5 or non so so we can consider uh, this uh, as a reference and through which we can calculate the relation between the maximum directivity of a isotropic antenna with respect to the wavelength vtm is equal to by using this expression so arm is equal to 0.119 lambda square dor is equal to 1.1.5 1 in that case lambda square upon 4 pi so using equation uh, 74 we can write equation 73 as arm is equal to dor atm is equal to dor lambda square upon 4 pi from this equation and this equation 74 so uh, from the two two equation we can get the some important relation that uh, relation describes about the maximum effective aperture aem of any antenna is related to the maximum directivity d not AEM is equal to lambda square upon four pi into d naught. So this is very very important, and this relation uh, we can find out in terms of directivity as well as in effective area. If we have uh, multiplying uh, this relation with the uh, conduction dielectric efficiency or loss, or we can say it's a radiation efficiency. in that case aem is equal to ecd because in this case we have consider is the maximum efficiency and this is the relation in terms of ecd lambda square upon 4 pi into d not so from the uh, multiplication of ecd into d not we can represent with the gain also that we have discussed in the previous lectures of this series and we can find out the effective area in terms of gain also by using this expression of ae is equal to lambda square upon 4 pi into g so this equation 79 is very very important that we need to uh, required when during the analysis of various kind of antenna properties and antenna characteristics so in other form we can also represent uh, this equation 77 and when the antenna is matched to the load and incoming wave is polarization matched to the load i means there is no polarization mismatch as we have discussed in the polarization lecture and in this case we have discussed this the calculated the polarization loss factor if the polarization loss factor is not exist in that case uh, this equation is valid this equation and this equation is valid if the polarization and uh, reflection losses are included it means uh, polarization mismatch is occur or exist it means plf is not equal to 0 then we can calculate the maximum effective area by using this expression 78 so aem is equal to e not and this is the total rate efficiency lambda square upon 4 pi d not and this is the plf that we have discussed polarization loss factor and uh, in terms of ecd we can also represent aem is equal to ecd 1 minus tau square lambda square upon 4 pi d not and uh, this is the polarization loss factor 
so this is very very important uh, that uh, is need to uh, required uh, to solve some kind of problem based on the effective aperture and directivity as well as gain of the antenna further we have discussed about the vector effective lens let i of n be the input current at the terminals of the transmit antenna producing an electric field ea in the far field region and uh, this is uh, when antenna using in a transmitting mode in that case we have considered i e uh, i in and ea here you can see the dipole antenna or we can uh, consider some other kind of antenna maybe the horn and other kind of antenna in a receiving mode here you can see this is the e field of plane wave and this is the direction of propagation and this is the e field and uh, this uh, we have considered as a dipole having the length l by 2 from the origin or we can say center fed and this is minus l by 2 and uh, the effective length vector effective length l is related to the ea ea is the radiated electric field and uh, in the receiving mode then ea having some component maybe the theta and phi component so in the case of dipole antenna or maybe the, in the case of phone antenna it is having e theta and e phi component in the unit vector direction of a theta and a phi that is represented by using this expression et the effective length can also be written in the uh, in terms of complex vector component l of theta and l of phi along the theta and phi direction so uh, this is the l effective is equal to theta comma phi is equal to a theta is the unit vector direction l theta theta comma phi plus a of phi l phi theta comma phi so this is the expression of 81 and uh, when the problem is given in that case we can directly compile or we can directly compare the equation 80 and equation 81 then we can find out the vector effective length of any kind of antenna further if uh, the effective length represent the antenna in a transmitting and receiving modes and it in it is particularly useful in relating the open circuit voltage of the receiving antenna and this relation can be represent open circuit voltage this is a scalar equal to e of i e of i is the incident electric field and in the vector form into l of e is the if vector effective length and the both quantities are vector and their door product is a scalar scalar quantity and this scalar quantity is the open circuit voltage at the terminals here you can see this terminals we can calculate the open circuit voltage so we can define from the uh, above analysis that the effective length is the ratio of magnitude of open circuit voltage developed at the terminals of the antenna this is the open circuit voltage to the magnitude of electric field distance in the direction of antenna polarization here you can see and uh, if uh, we have calculated the uh, dot product or magnitude in that case we can say l is equal to voc upon e so this relation uh, or expression 82 is very very important for discussing or calculating the vector effective length of any kind of antenna we are taking uh, one example uh, that is based on the directivity and uh, maximum effective aperture area and in this the effective aperture area em f z in and z naught are given and we need to calculate the value of d naught so by using expression 78 as we have discussed here this is the expression this is the generalized expression and we can cal calculate uh, the value of uh, uh, this expression uh, having uh, lambda square upon 4 pi ecd 1 minus rho square rho w minus rho this is the pol polarization loss factor into d naught so we need to calculate the d naught and this is the polarization mass in that case we can consider equal to 1 and first we need to calculate the value of rho and rho is equal to z in minus z naught upon z in plus z naught which is equal to 0 0.2 and another parameter is required lambda and lambda is equal to uh, c by f f is given so we can calculate the value of lambda is equal to 3 beta so we can calculate the directivity by using uh, by solving this expression which is equal to 3.125 here ecd is not given it it means uh, in the question it is mentioned that the no conduction and dielectric losses in that case we can ca consider as a 100% efficient antenna so we, ECD we have considered is equal to 1 
then we can find out the value of d naught this is the another another example and that uh, need to test yourself and uh, this is uh, based on the effective length of a linear antenna so, so i mean uh, you need to calculate the le uh, derivation and uh, which is for a lossless antenna maximum power transfer you need to calculate le in terms of a maximum and that depends on the neta and r of r AE and AM represent the effective and maximum uh, effective aperture of the antenna. Neta is the intrinsic impedance of the antenna. So, uh, how we can solve this, this kind of problem? So, simply you can consider the basic uh, theory or basic definition of the effective aperture and then uh, further uh, we have considered the vector effective length equation and in, in this equation we need to calculate the incident field. And incident field uh, you can calculate by the ratio of e theta upon s pi or we can say simply e by h which is equivalent to neta. So by using these three uh, assumptions or three uh, equations you can solve uh, or calculate the effective length of linear wire antenna. And this uh, type of problem may be very important uh, for, for a exam point of view. And this is the example 30 and three, uh, sorry three and four and this example to test again test yourself and this is for the x band and you need to calculate the maximum effective aperture when the gain uh, at a frequency is given and this is the radiation intensity of the antenna u of theta comma phi and where theta is equal to 0 to 90 and 90 to 180 degree is given and phi is equal to 0 to 360 so you can consider uh, when calculating uh, the radiated power and some kind of federal parameter relevant to the uh, directivity and uh, further we need to calculate the effective aperture area then you can consider that theta is equal to 0 to pi 5 by 2 and pi by 2 to uh, pi, pi and phi is equal to 0 to 3 to pi so and uh, you need to calculate the maximum effective area and uh, this uh, problem is similar kind of problem that we have discussed during the analysis of uh, uh, directivity and gain analysis of the antenna when the radiation intensity of the antenna is given further uh, the technique or the relation that we have discussed in the lecture between the maximum effective aperture as well as the directivity that relation that we can directly use and we can calculate the maximum effective aperture of the antenna Thank you very much uh, for uh, listening this lecture and I hope this lecture may uh, is beneficial for you. Uh, in the next lecture of this reach, uh, we will discuss about uh, some kind of free transmission equation and that is very important in the case of wireless communication systems that we will discuss in the subsequent lecture of this reach. Thank you.